We're back here on the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. Joe DeLeo and Ryan Roberts, we've got another positional ranking coming your way as we are going to make an effort to round through all of these position rankings for the 2023 NFL Draft. If you've missed any of the other ones, they're on our YouTube channel, Hack City, or on the podcast feed. Make sure you go and check those out. Today, Ryan, we have got Edge, which is one of the more premier groups in the 2023 NFL Draft. This grouping, and I've gotten asked this question a lot on the radio spots that I've done, Ryan, I'm sure that you have too. A lot of people asking, what position group has the most talent? Which one's the deepest? Which one's the best of the bunch? And my answer has always been edge and defensive tackle. We've got a lot of really good top-end talent. We've got a lot of really good back-end talent. Obviously, we're only going to get into those top five guys, but still, a lot of names to know in the top 10 of this year's draft class. You have defensive tackles at the top of that as far as most depth? I just in, in terms of talent. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like the, I'm sorry. And when asked the question of like, what are the best draft classes? I've an- answered it with, uh, with defensive tackle. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I mean, defensive end. Um, so again, I feel like we've talked about this all the time, but we're classifying yeah. both stand up rushers in a three man front and four, three defensive ends in the dirt as edge rushers. I, I think Joe, for me, the exciting part, and this usually happens, but I think it's especially true this year, is there's a lot of different body types, right? Like a lot of guys, and I'm just looking down my list, man. I have like a 245-pound guy, 275, 240, 275, 270. Like there's a lot of you know bigger body types, but then there's also a lot, a lot of those stand-up rusher types, more of like outside track players, which mm-hmm. will be fun to kind of decipher this list because, again, we're grouping two – skill sets that are completely opposite right like some of these guys are not going to play in the same scheme some of these guys are not going to play in the same system their roles are going to be different that's what makes the edge classification so nuanced and a fun conversation because i think people kind of just throw them together and don't explain what their role actually is at the next level i'm going to do that sir i'm going Uh. to explain where they fit on the next level but i would also just want to just want to ease everyone into this one Ease everyone. Is this if this is your first time listening to this podcast, you're going to think I'm an idiot uh, on some of these rankings. But all I have to say is, let it play out. Let it play out. Are you setting yourself up like that. I'm, I'm not setting um, myself up because I think long term people are going to look at it and be like, "Wow, that was a really good list." But short term, with just kind of the outside perception and what the ma- you know the mainstream media are kind of hyping up, I think some people will be like, "Oh, you have that guy. That spot, he's going to go here," and blah 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 blah. You know, vice versa. So, so I think though that one guy who definitely needed. Some explanation on his usage was Will McDonald, who I have at number five, Ryan, to kick us off here. Yep. He at Iowa State was used like a 290-pound defensive end in a 3-3 stack scheme. And this guy who's been listed at 240, I think was his number at the combine, at six foot three, will not touch that role at all in the NFL. This is a stand-up rusher. This is a 3-4 outside linebacker. And we got to see glimpses of that. At the NFL, uh, sorry, the Senior Bowl, rather, we got to see him uh, get comfortable at the NFL Combine. He, what is exciting about him is the flexibility, the explosiveness that he has for his physical profile. The only hang-up, the only slight hang-up that I have on him, and I I think that he is going to be drafted somewhere on day one, but the only slight hang-up that I have on him, Ryan, is the size. I think that he just needs to add a little bit more weight, and then I can be fully comfortable, but outside of that, This is a very explosive athlete that was misused and when put in a position to succeed at the Senior Bowl, was able to show some flashes of what he's capable of. Will McDonald is on my list, Joe. He is not number five, though. So I guess that'll be a little bit of a conversation a little bit. But I think that people need to understand that the weaknesses, I guess we're going to call them weaknesses in Will McDonald's game are not necessarily translatable weaknesses. <laughs> like he's not going to play that four four I role at the next level. Like that is not a it's not a translatable thing. So some of the weaknesses I think you get of Will McDonald on film, you're just like, but that weakness isn't necessarily where uh, going to be a weakness when he's a stand up rusher playing in like a wide nine technique. Like that's not going to be kind of super translatable. But I think the things that you love about Will McDonald, and again, I'll go a little more in depth when I get to him on my list, is that. That outside track ability, man, is something that is not as prevalent in this class. Like, there's a lot of power based rushers, there's a lot of strong dudes, long arms, inside counters, that type of deal. Mm. Will McDonald is one of the rare guys that can win a, a, the outside track with finesse, speed, and ankle flexion. Like, that's kind of his game. So, I'm very high on Will McDonald, but I'll get to him a little more exclusively in a few minutes here. 
Number five for me, Joe. This is why this is why I was prefacing this show, man. People are going to be mad at this. You have, have someone ridiculous. I have Tyree Wilson at number at number five. From oh, Texas that's Tech. not the that's not that ridiculous. Joe, Joe, he might be the first defensive end off the board. He might be the first edge off the board. I I don't I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think it's going to happen. Is, is I think he's going to be the those... first defender off the board. I'll leave him. I'll one up. You on think it. he's going over Will Anderson? I do. Why? Just the tea leaves, man. Just the tea leaves. I do. We just did this last year with Trayvon Walker. We just did this last year, Joe. But are they similar players, though? That's like similar where... size, power based rushers. Yeah, people will coin them together. They will. Okay, your your thoughts on on, okay. on Wilson, though? Tyree Wilson. I have gone full circle with Tyree Wilson, Joe. I was pretty high on him in in the summer, as in like I thought he was going to be a top hundred with. Top 100 pick with top 50 upside was kind of how I coined him. I literally had, I literally had recommended him to a couple agents in the in the summer because I liked a lot of what he did on film as a mm-hmm. as a junior in 2021. And then we get into this point where he has his best season, awesome, and now people are mocking him in the top five, top ten, and I'm like, I'm out, man. I'm out on that conversation. I'm out because when I look at Tyree Wilson, I'm like that kid is best utilized in multiple fronts, guy that can be moved around the line of scrimmage a ton. He has a very imposing power profile. He has extremely long arms, but he's not overly flexible. He's not overly explosive. He's a power-based physical dude that can play five, could play from four, could play four eye. He can do a little bit of everything from a power perspective, and he plays with a relentless motor. I love that profile. But this isn't a kid that I project to being a double-digit sack artist each and every year, right? Like, this is more like a six, seven sack a year guy. But he's also going to play the run very well and have a high motor. And that's great. But mm-hmm. for me, when I especially count upside into the evaluation, into the projection, I just think that the top 10 stuff is crazy, man. Like, I would be very okay with Tyree Wilson in the late first round to the right team. I'd be very okay with it. But top 10 is just too much for me. It's just too much. I, I think you and I see one player very di- – actually, technically two players very differently. But Uh-oh. I, I really like Tyree Wilson. I do. Not top edge rusher high, but I have him higher than you do, and I think in the more realistic location of where most other people are putting him. I, I, I'm just going to say it. I have him at three is where I have him ranked, and, and I'll get to that in a second okay. just to re- reiterate that he's at three. But – what I love about him is the length. Sure. And the power is awesome. Is, it's awesome power. I, I can't even, I'm trying to think of a better word than awesome. It is commanding. Like he can really, really Com- dominate some Com- offensive linemen against some bad big 12 offensive linemen. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Yes, but he is, he kicked the crap out of some of these guys that he was going against. I posted a couple of clips. It's funny watching him go up against tight ends because that has to be the most daunting task having to face. Guys with less length and less yeah. power and less weight. Those guys were getting blown up by Tyree and, Wilson. And, and that's that's the role that I would use him most in the NFL. I would play him in a lot of six, like head up on tight ends and just tell yeah. him to beat the beat the poop out of him. I don't even know if I can say the S word on here, but like beat him up, man. Beat him up. Dominate him. Don't let them down block you. Just fight pressure. Do that type of stuff, right? Like he he can excel in that area. Like I, yeah. I think that the, the difference here is that I see him as a very high floor player. Right, like I see him as a dominant run defender, but I just don't see the pass rush upside, man. I think he could have some some mixed results in that regard, and that's kind of what's the hang up on me is I just don't think that he's going to be a complete football player at the next level. Before we continue on with this video, I just want to tell you folks about an exciting new partnership that we have with this channel with Underdog Fantasy. Ever since I joined, I've been having so much fun. There are so many different exciting games that make watching games during the offseason more exciting. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it has made it way more entertaining since I found Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite game to play so far, which I think you should try out, is Pick'em. It is so easy to play. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it simple. With their easy-to-use website and mobile apps, pick between two and five players to fill out your Pick'em slip Get every pick right and take home some cold, hard cash. Use code HACK, H-A-C-K, HACK, like the name of this channel. Use code HACK to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. 
Go sign up. You won't regret it. You're going to have a blast. Check out Underdog Fantasy. I also want to tell you folks about our other reoccurring sponsor that we have on this channel, that being Bet Online, betonline.ag, which is all the updated odds, news, and anything for sports betting. It's my go-to source for when I want to be betting specifically on games. I love betting on college basketball or the NBA, uh, especially again during the off season, always looking for more fun ways to be uh, focused in on some of these other sports. It's betonline.ag and use promo code BELIEVE50. It's promo code BELIEVE50 to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. I can get that. I can totally understand that. But the the reason why the reason why I I like Tyree is that I think it's more tangible and I more tangibly saw the disruption. You know, like I really got to see him cause problems and cause a commotion and chaos by how strong he was. You know, the yeah. power moves that he brings to the table against offensive linemen he was able to create space for himself by just tossing guys aside. That is what, for me, I think is really exciting. I don't know. Maybe I'm overvaluing the fact that he's kicking the crap out of some Big 12 guys. One of the other guys we're going to talk about in a second was going against ACC offensive linemen. So it's it's like, you know, how much, how much better are those ACC offensive linemen compared to the Big 12 offensive linemen? But the way that he was beating up on guys, and I, I know that he wasn't like a – he was actually pretty productive at Texas Tech this past year. Pleasure, I think yeah. it translate the the disruption there is for me where I got to see the results and I don't want to discount it and that's why I have him at I, three why I have him ranked that high. I, I think that the the disruption in the run game absolutely translates. I think we see that mm. similarly. I'm not like I think that we both think that he could be a high, high impact run defender, right? Yes. Like we agree on that. I just don't. I think we do this too often with some power based rushers. Like we just, I mean, people just did it with Trayvon Walker last year where you're just like, look at that power profile. Look at that length. Yes. But can he be a consistent player against a pass as a pass rusher in a passing league? Can he do that stuff? I'm not sure consistently. Like I'm just not sure about it. So Ryan on that note. Yeah. Who the hell's running a vacuum? I swear to God, this office, man. <laughs> I just I can't like do a, a normal show without getting I, I can't even disrupted. hear it. I can't even hear it. I, I, I know, but it's just insanely distracting for me. Like, holy hell, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Like, why are we running a vacuum? Uh, besides that, Ryan, the guy I was hinting on is my number four edge rusher who I have after Tyree Wilson. That is Miles Murphy from Clemson. Wow. Look, okay. I like I look I like Miles Murphy again before anyone gets upset. This is somebody who I graded as a top 25 pick. I think when it's all said and done, he is going to be selected probably in the top 15 because of maybe a potential run on edge rushers that goes on early in this year's NFL draft. I think you get a lot of the same stuff where he's got a really nice power profile. He's a very strong kid. He's a little bit more bendier than Tyree Wilson. He does a really good job of, of holding the line of scrimmage and not getting driven off the ball very well, very much. Here's where I get a little bit held up, and it's what I brought up a second ago with Tyree Wilson, is I feel like Miles Murphy isn't as noticeably disruptive. You know, and like I watched him against Notre Dame, and I felt like he didn't do a ton. That whole, and, de- that whole defense didn't do anything against Notre the, Dame. But, sure. he, but that was that's supposed to be the the best evidence of what you're going to do against one of the best offensive lines in the country. I watched him also against North Carolina, and he had a better game against North Carolina. But at the same time, like I just didn't get a guy who was constantly getting in into the backfield, getting pressures on the quarterback. It was happening. It's definitely there. He's got the traits to do it. But I just didn't I didn't catch enough of that, you know, for me to put him higher than where I'm placing him at four. I, th- I think some of the inconsistencies from – I mean, because Miles Murphy was very productive at Clemson for three years, right? It's not like he wasn't yes. productive, but the, the I think the inconsistencies with underbred Venables and even last year with Wes Goodwin is they don't ask him to be an attack-style player all the time. Like, he's just kind of playing at the point of attack a ton. That's not on Miles Murphy, though. That's what he's asked to do, right? It's not like he's being yes. tentative and he's being passive. Like, that's the scheme that he's playing in. I just think for me – and, I mean, I, I guess I'll – should I just let the cat out of the bag? I have Miles Murphy as my number two edge rusher in this oh, class. I wow. do. Like, I love Miles Murphy because where I, what I value in edge rushers, and I think history has kind of told you that this does matter, and this is why we always talk about why testing is important for edges, even more translatable than some other positions. It's because traits matter at the edge, man. It does. And I think Miles Murphy has some stupid traits, man. He's 6'5", 
275, length, power. I mean, he's going to run. I mean, I don't know if he ran at the pro day, but like he was projecting himself uh, to run in like the four fives. Like this kid is an explosive, twitchy athlete. He's got some bend to him as well. So yeah, he's not a finished product right now. I think that we both agree on that. And, it's, it's, and I think that's a lot due to the usage that he was asked to, you know, what he was asked to do while a part of the Clemson Tigers. But man, when I look at him and I say 6'5", 270, length, explosive, has good flexibility. All those things tell me that that translates, man. And I, I just think that his best football is ahead of him. And I think that he is he could potentially be a special football player at the next level. I really love Miles Murphy's potential. I will say I do believe that Cleveland Farrell might have ruined it for Miles Murphy. Just from like a fan standpoint, I think that wherever he's drafted, there's going to be a lot of stupid noise like, oh, this guy. St-. And it's happened. Look at the mock drafts we've done. Every time we've projected Miles Murphy anywhere, yep. everyone's gotten upset and gotten all hot and bothered. Very upset about it. It's very strange to me, man. Because every, everyone thinks he's Cleveland Farrell, and they're they're completely different players. Cleveland, Cleveland Farrell, Farrell wasn't, shouldn't have gone where he went. And Cleveland Farrell wasn't a good athlete. Miles Murphy is. Miles Murphy's a yep. very good athlete. Like it's, it's, just, it's a very different situation. Joe, I know we're skipping around a little bit here. Well, who is your number four? My number four is Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. That was my number four. He is a player. Oh, oh, why? Why did you look at? Why did you look like that? Wait, I'm trying to. Th- it's more so not like oh, like why are you saying that? It's like I'm trying to think who fits it ahead of him. But continue. Yes. I think I think I understand who who uh, who does. So I have Lucas Van Ness at number four. There is a lot of the same stuff I said with Miles Murphy. There is very true of Lucas Van Ness. He's not quite as flexible as what Miles Murphy is. He's much more of a linear player. But man, six five. 275. I think it was like 272 at the combine, whatever the heck he was. Mm-hmm. 458 in the 40. Explosive. And he had a decent three cone and short shuttle for his size as well. This kid is a high upside athlete at the position. At that size, he's got the six pack. His nickname is is what was it? Thor Hercules. or Hercules? Whatever. Hercules. It was. Right, yeah. So he's, it's Hercules. And he just looks a hundred percent like the part, man. Iowa did not use him well, though. They didn't, in my opinion. He was playing defensive tackle a lot at Iowa. Yes. Because he was the most oh my physically God. strong football player on their defensive line. You saw more edge work in 2022, but it's still raw. It's still raw. This is a pure power based rusher right now. But again, I talked about it. I am a sucker for traits at the edge spot. I'm a sucker for it. And that kid, for me, has a higher upside than what Tyree, Tyree Wilson has. Tyree has a, per, a significantly higher floor, in my opinion, than what Lucas Van Ness does. But Lucas Van Ness has legitimate attributes and skills that I look at and say that can translate to being an impactful pass defender and an impactful run defender. I think that's the difference for me. So Lucas Van Ness, number four, Iowa Edge. I really do believe that if Lucas Van Ness played at an SEC program and if he played – a, a starting role in the position yeah. that he was supposed to play. I think we would be talking about him as maybe the top edge in this class. Like that he's young and yes. what he does is goofy. Like you talked about the explosiveness. We got those testing numbers that were better than we thought. And we knew coming into the day that he was a good athlete. Like they, we they knew were just, that he was a good athlete. They they were different than what I thought. I thought he was going to be very explosive short area. So like I expected the vertical broad jump to be good. Yeah. They weren't that great. But the 40 time and the three comb were really good. I'm like, that's a little bit of a different player than I thought he was at Iowa. And honestly, Joe, I, I think this is going to be a little bit of a hot take because people aren't going to agree with this at all. But I th- really, I honestly kind of wish Lucas Van Ness went back to school for one more year. I do. And it's because it's not a valuation uh, thing. It's not a valuation thing. He's going to go top 15 yeah. this year or next year. That's That's not the reason. The reason is that I think next year he could have came in and been a little bit more early impactful than what he will be this year coming into the NFL. Like I think that he's going to be a guy yeah. that is going to be kind of eased along by the end of the season. He's starting, but the production year one, I don't think is going to be stellar. If he had another year under his belt playing fully on the edge, I think he could have been a lot more impactful year one than what he will be this year. That's kind of the only reason I'm saying that. And to your point, could be the first edge off the board next year ex- instead of the third or fourth guy this year in this situation. Yeah, I admittedly think he's going to go higher than third or fourth, but the and and I'll fully divulge where where I have these rankings in a second. I just think that Van Ness, man, the length, the power, all of it just he's got everything. He checks every single box. 
Yep. And while it might have been a misuse for putting him inside at Iowa, I think at least now I know that if we see this a lot with JJ Watt, where the Texans would put him as a three tech, they would bump him inside and they'd have him rush as a as a, a defensive tackle in various sub packages. So to know that I can do that with Lucas Van Ness is a positive. I just think physically this kid is so freaking gifted. I think that he is going to be problematic once he does fully come around. He might be, as you said, one of those guys where his rookie season, when, when he gets a full stretch of snaps, will be like, oh, was he really worth going that high? Was he really right. worth it? And then he's going to really come into his own. I think his second year, he is going to be one of those players who's going to put all that all that production together. But, I, dude, I see it, man. I, I'm a big, too. big Lucas Van Ness fan. Joe, here's a great stat. Lucas Van Ness is still only 21 years old. Okay, he's still only 21 Goofy. years old. Young guy. Who? All right. So there's. All right. So I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you one fact in order to get to my actual question for you. Okay. So one fact is that the youngest player that we have in the database this year for draft eligible players is B.J. Ojolari from LSU, who did not make my list, but he's a talented football player. He's only 21 yeah. years old. Only 21 years old. Actually, not even 21 years old yet. Who is the second youngest player in the database, Joe? Second, Anthony Richardson. No, 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 edge. no, no Just no, Edge. No. Oh, Edge. Just Edge. So it's B.J. Ojolari is the youngest. Who's the second Will youngest? Will Anderson. Wrong. Who is it? Miles Murphy. I always forget that that he's so young. He he, he feels like he's been there for so long that he's like yes. 25. He just turned 20. Why. He just turned 21 a couple months ago, man. He is a young cat still. Very young cat. Ryan, moving on up to number three, and and I already broke this down with uh, with Tyree Wilson and where I have him, and and not to not to belabor the point, I just Tyree, I, the reason why I have him ahead of Miles Murphy is a little bit more tangible, visible disruption than I get, I think, from him from a snap to snap basis. Yep. Maybe he's not a fifteen sack guy. Maybe he doesn't ever eclipse that. But I think at the very least, like that's a guy who's. 10, 12, 15 tackles for loss type of a player who's I can defending the run really well. So I think that there's value in that for me very slightly. Uh, who is your number three, though, not to just continue to talk about Tyree Wilson? It was Will McDonald. I love Will McDonald from Iowa State. I know that I'm going to be higher on him than just about everybody. I see it. But yeah. I, I do also see some of the mainstream guys. There was one. I, was it Kuiper? Was it McShay? I forget who it was. But someone had him at number eight overall in a mock draft, which is high for him. I, I'll be very yeah. honest. Like, that's a little high for Will McDonald. But this kid is the best outside track rusher in this class, in my opinion. He's got the speed profile. He's got the length profile to outreach offensive tackles. He's bendy, explosive. And I mean, honestly, you know, back to the bend there for a second, Joe. He is the most flexible pass rusher in this class, in my opinion. That kid can run under the table. Like, that is this type of rusher. And I personally, we're talking about scouting bias all the time. That's my bias. That is. Mm -hmm. Guys that can bend outside track are so rare to me because I can always add power to a player, right? But it's very hard to add flexibility. I mean, you talk about like doing yoga and stretches and all that type of stuff. Like you can add some flexibility, but not to a degree that Will McDonald has. Like nobody's ever going to be that flexible doing an amount of yoga that they do, right? Like Tyree Wilson is never going to be able to do some of the stuff that Will mm. McDonald does. So having that baseline of athleticism and the bends, I can add weight onto a guy like Will McDonald. I can get him stronger. But that that bend that he has – I think that's a rare trait in this class. I, and I think that he's one of the few that has it. Again, big Will McDonald fan. I think I just value a little bit more some of the things that it, it's just, it's a lot more. I think you're, you're a power than guy, man. Else. You're a power oh, guy. I am. You're I'm a, a big guy. power guy, especially, it. especially this year. So that was your number three. My number three was Tyree Wilson. My number two is Lucas Van Ness, who again, oh. I'm obsessed with Lucas Van Ness. Very big fan of Lucas Van Ness. So we know where he sits. You said at number two, you have Miles Murphy. Any final right. thoughts on him before we talk about the crown jewel who should be the number one guy in this group? I think there's some overanalyzation on Miles Murphy this year. And not saying by you, I'm saying like a general perspective. I see people extremely low on Miles Murphy. And I just kind of illustrated that point of how young he is to say, I know he's been on the front of everyone's minds for three years because he was an immediate contributor on Clemson. He was a former five-star recruit coming out of the state of Georgia. But the fact of the matter is, is that Miles Murphy has all the tools to be very impactful in the next level, and he's still young, guys. Like He's still young. He has time to develop, and I think that as long as he gets in with a good system and a good defensive line coach, Miles Murphy's upside is still tremendous. So I just don't want us to over – I think some of us are just overthinking Miles Murphy just a little bit. Like I understand there's inconsistencies on film, 
Every prospect mm. has some inconsistencies on film, though. But Miles Murphy has 6'4 plus, 270 pounds, flexibility, explosiveness, power. And when you have all those things together, as long as it's developed properly, I think he could be a superstar. Speaking of superstar. Yes. <laughs> Will say, Anderson. Ray. Good say, Will Ray. Anderson. Yes. Number one edge prospect by both of us in this class, obviously. Um, unless Keon White's your number one guy? is, that, is, is uh, that He is not. He is not. <laughs> I mean, Notice he ran, how he, he didn't ran, make this list. <laughs> I heard he's the fastest player at 283-plus pounds at the Combine this year. Dude, that was the, I said that to you. That is the <laughs> stupidest tweet because, first of all, the, the 40 time – that was in the tweet was wrong. He ran yes. slower than yes. the four six five, and then the second part of it, you moved the line by one one <laughs> a pound, single pound, a single pound, one yeah. pound. Yeah. And if we paid attention to the fact that if you moved it to two eighty two, the guy ahead of him beat him by a whole tenth of a second with this incorrect time that you tweet. That NFL rookie watch account sucks M- more it than sucks. a tenth. More than a tenth, Joe. I mean, literally, man. Uh, uh, Adeboire ran four four nine, and even if he ran four six five, that's a that's w- one and a half a tenth of a second. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's that's substantial it, time, man. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Uh, not to not to spend too much time on that. Yeah, I said this on this show, Ryan. I said this on this damn show at the beginning of the year. Will Anderson's not going to have the same amount of production, and we're going to all sit here and we're going to overthink him. And yes. we're going to crap on him, and we're going to say, is he as good as we thought he was? Is he not the number one defensive player in this draft? Everyone was saying that Jalen Carter is miles ahead of him. Yeah, Guys, he wasn't going to replicate that success. He wasn't going to replicate that production. Uh-huh. Especially, I know he had some down games, but especially facing off against offenses that were very effectively preparing for him and countering him so he did not make the same plays that he did in the season where he was almost a Heisman finalist. Yep. What excites me though, Ryan, about Will Anderson? It's the power. Yes. This guy is a, a 245, 250 pound edge rusher. He is not uh he didn't have like a crazy 40 time, and I think some people were a little disappointed he about that. He still ran four six flat at 253 pounds, man. I know. Like <laughs> it's a great number. But the power that he has for his frame. Yes. Flexibility. Yes. Explosiveness. Yes. But the big thing for me, and I said this over the summer, is the motor. The yep. motor that this kid has as an edge rusher with all of the boxes checked. As again, and I said this, and some people keep trying to correct me on this. I think he's a generational type player, man. I don't think we get yeah. guys that are built like this, that can have this much of an impact. And then also on top of it, the one thing that we rarely get with defenders is a motor that they will play through the whistle. That is what excites me about Will Anderson. Draft a kid as the top defense player off the board. I don't think we need to think twice about it. The guy's going to come in immediately, and he's going to be a defensive rookie of the year candidate, if not the winner. So elite football players would be elite in any single draft that they came out, and I think that's what we have with Will Anderson here. You know, And I, I think he's a borderline generational player, but at the end of the day, he's a guy that no matter what year you drop him into – He's a slam slam dunk top 10 to 15 pick like every any single year, because like you said, Joe, he's a little bit of an odd body type in the sense that he's six, three and a half, six, three and four ace, 253 pounds, 33 and seven eighth inch arms. though, so really nice length, but he's a he looks like he would be a lightly built stand up rusher. But the thing that brings you takes you off guard and takes a lot of offensive tackles off guard is this kid's power profile mm. is silly, man. He's got some crazy explosiveness in his lower half. Just he can put offensive tackles on skates. And I think the crazy part about Will McDonald, I mean Will McDonald, the crazy part about a guy like Will Anderson is that I still think that he has some development to be had from a nuanced perspective, right? Like adding tools to the toolbox. Despite that. He's had 27 sacks in the last two years at Alabama, despite that. And also, by the way, Will Anderson is also only 21 years old still. <laughs> like He's a guy that we have known about since his true freshman season in 2020. But man, the just the overall understanding of how to attack offensive tackles and make them uncomfortable, that's Will Anderson, man. Plays with a great motor great pad level, great physicality, great power. He's got pop in his hands. He does have flexibility. I feel like he could use it a little bit more at times than he naturally does, man. I just think he tries to overpower people maybe a little bit too much at times. Yeah. But I think that this kid just, 
he has pretty much every tool that you need in the toolbox. He is going to be a double-digit sack artist almost every year of his career, in my opinion. He's a little bit of a, a different type of cat. He's very unique in that type of rusher he is. And I think that that I think that's how some people could overestimate him or underestimate him at times. I should say, is that he's a little bit different than how you typically draw it up. But regardless, man, kid's special. You don't do what he did at Alabama for the last three years if you aren't. And I know we're not box score scouting, right? But a guy doesn't have thirty-four sacks in three years at a place like Alabama if he's not if there's not something to him, right? If there's not something a little bit special about him. Special is the word that comes to mind when you think about Will Anderson. Absolutely. And the other thing I just want to add in here, I remember one of my notes on him over the summer is that he needed to add some more moves yeah. to his his tool, you know, his tool belt of uh of pass rush moves. And I thought that he showed some improvement. I thought that he showed like he added and worked on some additional moves. Now it wasn't like anything significant, but I noticed that there were more moves that he was adding. And again, that's another thing that I think is going to make him so much more dangerous that he's not just straight up trying to bull rush a lot of these guys. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now he, um, I, I really think, I really think that the it, it's and and people think of that as a negative, the fact that he needs to add moves to his arsenal, but I think that's the biggest positive, man. He is yeah, so productive with a limited well repertoire, right? Yeah. So like, Get him with a, I think he I think he works out with Brandon Jordan, who's the pass rush specialist, right? But co- working with Coach Jordan and then going into an NFL locker room with a defensive line coach, hopefully a really good one, this kid still hasn't even nearly touched his upside, which is pretty scary for the production he had at Alabama. We'll see what happens. Joe DeLeon, Ryan Roberts. We'll be back with more. Let us know what you think in the comments. Which guys you want on your NFL team? Let us know. We'll be back.